When the drifters came, at first we hid. From dell and dwelling we heard their moans and felt only fear. When brave few set forth to combat the drifters, their blades dulled in armor splintered against rusted husks of former men. Now a new age of industry is upon us, and time for cowering and combat are long since past. Now we seek the drifters to lure them to the boiler. Hi everybody! In this video, I'll show you a step-by-step -step build guide for a design I came up with for a semi-automatic mob grinder that doesn't need any weapons. Instead, it uses a new resource introduced in Vintage Story 1.18, hot water, which can be found in geologic activity sites. As of the current version of the game, 1.18.7, hot water continually damages any entity in contact with it and it's currently one of only a handful of ways a mob can die apart from player kills while keeping its loot table values intact. Now, depending on your world settings, geologic activity sites can be quite rare to come across, so if you can't find one, this build still works with regular water, though you'll have to have a supply of weapons on hand, preferably spears, to poke your enemies from the safety of your bunker. So for the dimensions of the build, the outer walls will take up a 13 by 13 area, with a two block trench surrounding a seven by seven building in the middle. Now you'll need to have access to at least a copper anvil in order to craft what you're going to need. As far as tools go, we're going to need a hammer and a chisel, probably a few if you're using copper, a single bucket filled with hot water, and probably a pickaxe or two if you're digging down. This build does also work if you decide to build up from the ground rather than digging down, so whether or not you need a pickaxe is entirely dependent on your preferences. For this video, we'll be digging down. For materials, you're going to need two to six ladders, eight fences, though if you don't have access to hot water yet, skip the fences until you do. At least five trapdoors, 22 blocks for chiseling, I personally recommend quartz glass or lake ice for a nice balance of transparency while still being visible while chiseling. If you want to cut down on how much chiseling you have to do, you can get away with 12 blocks for chiseling and replace the other 10 top blocks with trapdoors. You'll also need one door, 18 window panes or slabs, I'll be using quartz glass slabs for this tutorial, and at least 77 blocks of any kind, just to make up your walls and roof. And you'll also need about 50 stones, any type, just for spawn proofing purposes. Let's get into the build! So the first thing we're going to want to do is pick a corner to be our top end for the trench. So let's just go with this one here. And you're going to want to dig two blocks down. And let's just do that for this whole outer ring. Now that we've got our two block deep trench here, we're going to want to dig out a little bit more. So from here, we're going to count one, two, three, four, five. And on the sixth block here, we're going to dig down a little bit more. And bring that all the way around. Now we're going to want to mirror this basically as if this is a diamond with our top corner that we chose earlier being the high point. So, just like here, we count five again from here. So one, to one, two, three, four, five. And on the sixth block, we're going to dig down one more again. This is just to allow the water to continually flow. And there we go. We have the next step of our trench. Now there's a couple more steps to digging this out. From here, we're going to go one, two, three, four, and here, on the fifth block, don't really need to count, actually. In this corner here, we're going to want to go one more block down. And again, we'll repeat that on the other side here. So, in the corner, one more block down. Now, technically... You could get away with not having this. If you don't want to dig too deep, if you have a lot of stone and not a lot of pickaxes, you can theoretically 
just elongate this by one more block and keep this all the same. It will make pouring the water a little bit trickier later on, but hey, it's up to you. But I'm in creative, and yeah, pickaxes are usually pretty cheap once you get enough resources. So this is the optimal way. This way you won't have things getting caught up on the corners by accident. So from here, you've got your little, uh, little square corner here where it dips down. So what we're going to want to do is make this a true little square and dig down two more blocks. And we'll do the exact same thing over on this side, dig down two more blocks. And so we should have in total here, our top portion here going one, two, three, four, five, dipping down for one, two, three, four, and down one, two, and then dipping down two blocks for the remainder of it. And this deepest portion here should be a total of six blocks deep. One, two, three, four, five, six. And this is our kill chamber. Okay, and when the trenches are all dug, it should look a little something like that. Now, one little correction here. These little 2x2 two two areas, we're actually going to want them to be 2x3. So the edge of them should line up with the corner of our central platform. Now we want to come down into our little boiling kill chamber here. And each of these blocks, we're just going to cut into the wall for the first two blocks of height. Just going one block deep for the moment. Now I'm just going to mark out these blocks here because these are the spots where our chiseled blocks will go. And these chiseled blocks will provide a little slot for us to carve the drifters or whatever else gets unfortunate enough to be trapped down here. Hey, little guy. Now that we have our trench dug out and the proper corner dimensions, we're going to dig out the inside of what's going to be our little house that we're going to stay inside of during temporal storms. So right in the center here, we're going to want to dig down six blocks. All right, now that we have our little house area here cleared out, this will be the room that we'll be spending our temporal storms in. Well, maybe not in this condition, but eventually. I'm going to add in a floor on this top layer here. Now, if you didn't remove the top layer of dirt, you're already good, if you're okay with the dirt floor. And there we go. Nice little bit of slate stone brick. I will be texturing up these walls a little bit, giving them a bit more aesthetic detail. You don't have to. You can make this entire thing out of dirt and rocks and whatever you find. It, apart from the chiseled blocks down below to carve your knife through them, uh, you can make this look however you want, really. You can go fancy, you can go not fancy. It depends how many chisels you want to burn through at the end of the day, right? So I think I'm going to go ahead, and before we go any further, I'm just going to pretty this up a little bit. And with the magic of editing, it'll be done in one, two, I should be counting down actually, three, two, one, a buoy. We are nice and fancy here. So for the little trench that we have around here, I have added a combination of slate gravel and sludgy gravel. Now this is the gravel that you find around the geothermal activity hot springs. You don't have to use it. I just like the look of it because it looks like it's full of rust which uh, kind of fits with how the drifters tend to look. So I think it's uh, it's fitting. Of course, once again, you can use whatever material you want here. I'm just doing this for the aesthetics. Now, the next thing we're going to want to do here is get some walls up, because this won't really work well as a defensive structure if it's not defensive. So for the walls here, you're going to want to go one, two, three, four two, three, four, and we're just going to put a pillar like this in each of the corners, just as a basis to start our walls. And then one row all the way around. And we're basically just going to go with a bit of a frame, just like so, giving us a total of four blocks high, 
and one, two, three, four, five blocks across, leaving ourselves a two by three window. And we're going to do that for each side, except for whichever side you decide is going to be your door. Which I would always recommend picking one of these taller sides, because these will be the sides that we'll need trap doors on to encourage drifters to jump on down. Six blocks, they're not going to tend to want to jump down there to get to us. Here, where it's only two, maybe three, yeah, they don't care. They'll jump down. So I'm going to pick this side here. Our top corner is right over here. But I'm going to pick here as my front door. So let's get the rest of these walls in and a little bit of a whoops door frame. There we go. I'll get these other two walls in and be right back with you. Okay, so now that we have our walls in and we are a little bit more defended in here, let's get everything in place. We're going to need a door. Any door will do. I'm using iron because, well, it looks nice. Now, for the windows here, I'm going to use ooh, quartz glass slabs just because they have a little bit of a smoky look. I'll be using the same texture for our chiseled blocks down below. And there we go. Now, you can use trapdoors if you'd like. Basically, you just want something here so that drifters won't be able to get in, but they will be able to throw rocks at you. What you're really going to not want these windows open for is bears. Bears can climb three blocks high. And we've got one, two, three, and there will be water. So technically, they'll be able to reach up to four blocks. So even if they're trapped down here, their three blocks starts right here to three and they can come right in your window and eat your giblets. A nice little added benefit of these being half slabs too is we can come up here and we count as standing inside this block, which means even if the drifters don't think that they have a path to us or wolves, bears, you can really catch anything in this, honestly, they're going to see us if we're here hopping around in our windowsill and then they're gonna run right into our little trench to their demise. Grab your rocks and you know what it is. We're gonna stone the floor. And we'll do the same down here, just on this 5x5 five five area here. We're going to leave this row out here clear for the moment, because this is where our chiseled block will go. And in order to get out of here, we're going to want a ladder. And we'll just cover that up with a trapdoor. Outside here, going to want a trapdoor here. Don't do what I did. This is why we need trapdoors. And one right there. So that will create our walkway. So when we run in here, we close those. Now, just like in the other block game, these will count as a walkable space, even when they're open. So a drifter chasing you is going to walk this way and, oh, down to their demise. Now, I would recommend adding another one onto this other side of the deep trench. So we have them mirrored, even though there isn't a door there. If we're standing in the window, or just regardless, they will still walk over this, thinking that it is a safe place to walk. If you find there aren't that many drifters coming to you right at the door, you can line the entirety of this with trapdoors. And that should give you a little bit higher rate of drifters walking down in this area here. Though we really don't want them just coming straight down here too much. It is preferable for them to come over to this side and fall down here. Uh, because from here, well, the next step that we have. On these corner bits here, where we have our, th our two by three area, we're going to want to go one block up and place any kind of fence. It can be a solid block, whatever you'd like. I'm going to go too high just because things will be not quite on the ground right here. They'll be floating a little bit, just bobbing on the surface of the water, and we don't want them necessarily jumping up over this. If they do, it's not the worst, but we want to keep as many of the living creatures 
that are getting caught in our little boiler path up here. Now we're going to hop around to the other side here and do the same thing. And we've got our fences in place. Now the reason we've got this as one block high is because any drifters, apart from the crawling ones, will not be able to get through here. They'll just bash against this. However, once they die and they droop down, well, they suddenly become only one block tall when they're dead. And they'll just slide right on through. They'll sink to the bottom, water will push them. I'm going to go ahead and add some trapdoors here just to match the ones that we've got on the outside here. Once again, these aren't necessary. Just one right here, one by the door. You should be good enough. I haven't had any problems in any of my testing. But if you find that a lot of drifters are spawning in this direction from wherever you build it, this may give you a little bit more mileage. Now, we're going to want to have a roof on this, just so we don't have anything spawning up on these walls and dropping down on our heads. You can use whatever you want for a roof. You could even just do a flat roof with dirt and just put stones on it. It'll work. I'm just going to use... Ooh, that's a nasty sound. I'm going to use this... Uh... No, I'm not going to use this copper roof. That looks... Like candy cane. Yeah, no, instead, for a splash of color, I'm just going to have this red clay roof. Now, unlike regular water, hot water is not going to freeze. So even in the winter, you don't have to worry about covering up this trench. This is just an aesthetic overhang for the roof. Okay, once you've got whatever type of roof you're deciding to put on there... We're going to just put a little lantern in here, just to give it a little bit of light. The ground is spawn-proof, so really the lantern is kind of just so you can see what's going on. Let's head down here, and this little strip here is the next part we're going to be working on. This is where we're going to want to break out the chisel. Now for our carving slots, we're going to want to use probably something transparent. You don't have to if you just want to only look through the slats. That's entirely up to you. I personally really like the quartz glass because it's got this foggy, almost steamed up look. And I think with the hot water, it just goes well. So there's three different styles that we're going to have. Technically two, but the third one's just a variation on the first. So we're going to have our flat walls with a little slot to carve in. We're going to have our corner piece down below in the corner that'll be the same, just with a corner slot that'll be a little bit different shape and size. And lastly, it'll be the first one just turned 45 degrees, 90 degrees, sorry. And that's going to be for the other wall. So for our flat wall pieces, we're going to want to chisel it, and we're going to want to take off at least 75% of the width. So I'm starting with an 8x8, moving on to a 4x4. Four four. Now, if you notice, it's pretty difficult to see where the edges of this is. Now, if you're using actual just glass, oh, <laughs> You'll find out pretty quick. It's almost impossible to see what you're doing with it unless you have very good eyesight. So I recommend the foggy look. Um, you can actually also use lake ice. It'll give you a bit of a blue tint. I find it's a little bit foggier than the, uh, the quartz glass, but it's not a bad look. Now, once we've got this guy down to four voxels thick, you can just stop there for the thinness. Uh, this will work perfectly fine. We'll be able to make our little uh, carving slot here, and everything will be perfect. On my survival world that I initially built and designed this on, I did go for a three-voxel-thick chiseled wall here. The added bit of wiggle room from it being a slightly thinner wall does give you a bit more variation on where you can point your cursor to carve uh, drifters, bears, wolves, whatever happens to fall in there. The extra voxel probably won't really affect much of anything. But I'm going to go with three voxels thick because that's as thin as I know I can get away with without letting water start flowing through our little hole. 
So, uh, see you in about 17 years when I finish carving this out. This is how people get caught. We'll tunnel. So the next step, just to make this a little bit easier to see, we're going to add in a little bit of the same block from our wall here. So for all of these, I'm going to be using shale rock. For the corner, the basalt polish rock, uh, just to keep it consistent with the wall. That's purely an aesthetic choice. Uh, any of the framing around it, <laughs> uh, the edging anyway, purely aesthetic. I do, however, recommend when we get to doing the little uh, carving slot, having something solid to look at is going to make it a lot easier to know where to aim, especially when the world's going all wonky during a temporal storm. So I'm going to get to outlining this and I'm just going to break this here. And I'll see you in another moment. One thing to definitely keep in mind is, especially with working with transparent blocks like this, if you are going three voxels thick, do not miss any holes inside of it. It'll be hard to see, but be very precise with your uh, your clicking. Because you don't want to be even one voxel shy. Uh, the density of the block is what determines if water can flow through it or not. And we are hitting right near the uh, the cusp of what is allowable and still considered solid. Okay, we have our outer pane, completely optional step, but that took far too long. Even in creative, chiseling is a time-consuming and uh, tedious process, but hey, you know, can't uh, argue with results. Did destroy a little bit of grass there, let me just fix that up. Eh. So, we're going to come down, you can see there is a little bit of a seam here. Now, if it's a little tricky, uh, you can just get rid of that top block to be able to see a little bit clearer on this one. We'll just pop that guy down there for now. Okay, so we're going to want to take our 2x2x2. Two by two by two. And I've already chiseled out a little bit of it here just to work as a small guideline for myself. But we'll want to go just from roughly the center here, down one, two, and the third, and the fourth we will break out. We want to do that for the two center columns here, and then for each of the sides around it. And you should have here, basically with your two by two, a four by two opening right here with essentially four voxels. One, two, three, four on the top and one, two, three, four on the sides. And this is our little carving slot. So I'm just gonna go ahead and frame around the edge of this, which is a single voxel of our same uh, I believe this was shale rock. I'm gonna get our shale rock on here. All right, catch you in a moment. And that is our first panel all complete. Three voxels thick with our little opening here, leaving us four from the sides and four from the top of this bottom block. So these are what we're going to use to line our walls down below. So I'm just going to copy these over onto here. Now, I'm so sorry once again if you are in survival and you don't have a mod that allows you to copy a shape onto another chiseled block, uh, you are going to have to make uh, five sets of this. Ten. Ten sets of this. Oh boy. So, down below, we'll just put our bottom ones on here. And on this row here, with your chisel, you can go ahead and rotate it. But this has a very interesting aspect to it. Now that it's been rotated, just because this version will hold water, this version will not. Why? They're identical. It's been rotated. That's about it. It's dumb. I don't understand. So what you can do, even just a single voxel, just add one, remove one, and now you're perfectly fine. So I'm just going to copy that one. And these now, because we have added a voxel and removed a voxel, 
everything is fine, and it now calculates properly that it is solid enough to stop water. I'm not going to put the tops on these just yet, so let's go ahead and get our corner one done first. Now we're going to want to make sure we're facing the same way that it's going to be placed in our building here. And we're going to want to do something similar to what we did with the flat walls here. Except we're going to want to make sure that it has that same thickness in an L shape. We're going around the corner with this, and now this is going to be tricky. Because we can barely see what is going on here, and I'm just running on the little outlines that we get for our selected area. And yeah, that looks about right. Now, <laughs> going to three voxels thick on this was a pain enough. Uh, this is more work. So I'll see you in another... Well, that took 17 years, so... Uh, 88? Now that we have it carved down to our ideal thickness, after only 88 years of chiseling down one voxel at a time, now we can throw in our trim texture. Woohoo! Okay, we have our entire outer frame on our corner piece here. So, same width as what we want, or same height as what we had on our flat walls here. We're going to want to come down and just starting in the corner here, uh, we're probably going to want to get this piece out of the way. In all honesty, having the top on it makes it harder to do the math. So from here, similar with our two by two by two, we want to have a two chisel area gap from the top. So one, two, and on the third, oh boy on the third and the fourth. And we're just going to want to go try our best to see what we're doing. And I believe that may be the right amount right there. It is a little bit smaller of a hole. You know what, I think we can get away with an ever so slightly wider one. I'm pretty sure that is fine. We'll find out. We'll find out. So, that is going to be in total. For our area is from the back corner here, which honestly is probably easier to uh, chisel out from. That is uh, my mistake for not starting there. So one, two, and then third and fourth are knocked out, and we have a one, two, three, four. So from the corner is one, and then two, three, four, and we want to carve out that area all along the corner. Now, just put another uh, one by one little frame around this guy, just to make it easier to uh, see where the corners of our carving slot are. So I'll just get this on here. You know, back in my day, we didn't have chisels. Nope. We had to deal with whatever blocks were given to us. You wanted a corner. Well, oh, Sonny Jim, you had to use yourself a combination of stairs and trap doors. Yeah, you wanted something more detailed than that? Too bad. Okay, so with our viewing hole, or our carving slot here, all done and dusted, we're just gonna pop this guy back on here, and get a nice little look. Looking good. Let's pop her in place. And just like before, I'll put the bottom one in, but we're going to leave the tops off of these for a moment, because we are now ready for a very crucial step. Water. Now, we're going to be very careful with this water, because if you're playing in survival, this stuff can kill you uh, pretty quickly. So we're just going to start 
in the corner here. And I probably advise, just in case you're worried about if the chisel work is going to hold, maybe start with cold water first, just to be sure. But we seem to be holding. So I'm just going to control right click, and then right click, and then control, and rinse and repeat, creating source blocks all along the edge here. And as you can see, even though we got a nice big old hole, there's no water coming through. So I'm just going to repeat that on this side. And really, if you do this right, you only need one bucket. Everything will be okay. And so from here, we have all the water that we need to put in place, in place, so we can go ahead and put the top layers on our glass. And once your glass is in place, or whatever material you've decided to carve out of, we are nearly done down below, in all honesty. And what I am going to do is, this is perfectly optional, I'm going to carve these blocks here, just to give them a little bit of an indent. And there we go. Completely unnecessary. These serve no functional purpose. Uh, I just like the look. Okay, so we're going to want to get the rest of our water in. So if you have your fences here two blocks high, you should be able to walk on them. Now you're going to want to be pretty careful here. Put your source block there. And these are on our next little platforms up. And that water should flow straight down into our kill chamber. Now the beautiful thing about the water flowing straight down here into the first carving slot that we've got, a little difficult to see through the water I know, but that will actually push the corpses down, or the dead drifters, I should be uh, <laughs> careful with my wording here, uh, the boiled drifter will drop down here and will mostly stay right there. If there's more than one, they'll start pushing each other, but because we've got the water flowing toward our carving slots, no matter where the, the bodies go, we'll be able to be in reach of carving them. That also means any uh, crawlers or ones that fall down here uh, will also be in reach to smack our faces. So we're just going to mirror what we've done here on the other side. Now after we have our corners in, we should be able to just go up to our top end here, plop one source in the corner and one source there, and we should have water flowing all the way there. And now what this is going to do is create a current that is constantly pushing outward from our top end all the way down. And it just flows down. Some of it is pushing toward the walls here, but that's okay. It's still going to push them downward in general into here where these source blocks are then pushing them, mixing with the momentum from this water toward the corner here. So they'll be pushed toward the grate, and then when they die, they'll be boiled, they will crouch on down, slip under the grate. Now let's just get some storage in here and make it a little bit more like home. There we go, looking a little bit more like home. So we have some trunks for storage, as well as a few tool racks here. If I get rid of that one, it doesn't really matter. Just to house maybe some extra knives if you're still using uh, flint knives or anything like that they do go pretty quick so having a few on hand will be great because you won't have to worry about weapon durability though just in case if the game glitches out and does spawn something on top of your stone floor here or upstairs maybe have a weapon on hand just in case for that uh ooh, also let's not forget get a little bit of lighting in here. And there we go. Just to keep it viewable in here. And that's the boiler room. Hope everybody enjoyed. If you liked this video, please leave a like, subscribe, and if you'd like to see more Vintage Story content, please... Howl at the moon like that wolf in the distance in the comment section below.
I'll catch you next time. Was that fine? Did I do good? Can I go home now? Where's my grandson? <laughs>